Hi everyone. So we're here. Um, I would firstly um, like to acknowledge the people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today. I'd like to pay respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples um, this evening. I would like to welcome um, you all. We have a group of wonderful repair people here in um, the room here at South Bank in Brisbane, and I know that we have um, a lot of people online joining us online, so I thank you very much. This is probably the fourth um, event that we've held that is funded through Griffith University's Law Futures Centre, and I would like to acknowledge um, the funding that is provided by the Law Futures Centre, who are a great supporter of the work that we are doing on the right to repair movement more generally, but also supportive of the Australian Repair Network. Um, tonight, um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Professor Leanne Wiseman um, with the Griffith Law School and am chair of the Australian Repair Network. And my colleague here is Associate Professor Kanchana Karawasam, who is working with me on a four-year ARC Australian Research Council Future Fellowship um, funded project on looking at um, unlocking intellectual property and um, the right to repair in Australia. And um, we also have Jane Hawthorne, who is a very active volunteer with the Australian Repair Network, who brings a wealth of experience um, to our organisation. And I'd also like to make special mention um, to Eleni Kalanditu, um, who is with our Queensland College of Art, who has been working on repair um, for a number of years through the design space and with um, projects um, in Queensland with socially disadvantaged communities up around the Maribyrnong and Harvey Bay region, um, looking at um, the transformational um, impact that repair can have on young and disadvantaged youths in that region. Um, Eleni and I have um, partnered and Kanchana on um, a Queensland government grant, which we don't, do not know the result of yet, but um, essentially that is to extend a program similar to that um, across Queensland to address issues of social isolation and loneliness in the post-COVID era, um, looking at repair in um, socially disadvantaged communities in Queensland um, to basically a, a three-year project through bike repair um, with youth. So we're waiting on the outcome of that, but um, that's something that um, the Australian Repair Network hopes to um, be involved in with partner organisations such as Revolve Recycling, um, with Give It, and with a range of repair cafes in Queensland, as well as a number of other community um, neighbourhood community centres in Queensland. So we thank all of those partners for um, their support. So tonight is an opportunity for us to come together as repair volunteers, repair um, conveners to network. Um, essentially, we provide these opportunities to bring people together, um, both in a hybrid sense, in person um, and online, to share experiences and knowledge, um, what's working well, what are challenging us in the Australian repair um, movement. So yeah. I thought I'd just provide a little bit of introduction and context. And I really um, would like to thank the people who are joining us online. I know that you've joined from all over Australia um, and it's great to see um, that we are all, um, you know, it's all part of one big family basically. And, that, and that's what um, I'd really like to kind of foster and, and grow as part of these discussions. Just to start, um, to step back a little bit from the work that we all do in the Repair Cafe movement is to remind ourselves some of the kind of higher order or the broader global movements that are supporting the work that we are doing. Um, you would know that in 2015, United Nations and um, set out the 17 um, Sustainable Development Goals and they are here um, and essentially this is all part of the recognition of we need to change our levels of consumption, we need to move away from a linear economy into a circular economy. Um, this is all um, 
not news to, to us or to you, but I thought it's always a good starting point. The work that we do on repair and the right to repair um, really centres around three of these UN SDGs, and that is um, number 11, and that's sustainable um, cities and communities, because really at um, the heart of what we do is strengthening communities and building community, building relationships across generations in our um, suburbs, in our communities, and the sharing of skills. So that is one of the primary um, goals of, of repair, is to coming together for that um, common purpose. Um, number 12 is um, about responsible consumption and production. And we know we can't escape the elephant in the room is that if we all consumed less, we wouldn't have the, the global waste crisis that we are facing. So consumption is at the very heart and there's a lot of work being done on addressing consumption, whether it be in textile, um, you know, use of devices, but the consumption um, issue is a very large one and we know, we know that. Um, essentially 13 is climate change um, and basically we know that reducing the e-waste and all of the waste that's going into landfill and diverting that um, by repairing and reusing will help us um, with our climate change goals. So I think it's really useful for us to kind of keep that in mind. Um, when we look at the move to the circular economy, one of the aims of the circular economy is to reuse and repair and recycle. We know, sorry, that's a good reminder, Wayne, sorry, I should say, uh, I've got to set, start, anyone's got mobile phones, maybe silence. I did actually say, let's that. That's all right, sorry. Um, that's okay, it's usually me, so that's fine. Um, so our linear model of, you know, take, make and waste, we know, but this importance of reuse and repair, um, recycle, design, industrial ecology, everything, to be honest, I think we all recognise that the focus of our federal government in the past has been very much on the recycle. And so there's been a lot of money and a lot of energy going at the end of the product life cycle. And it's really refreshing to see discussions at the federal minister of environment level raising the priority of moving up the product life cycle to recognise the role that repair and reuse can play. If we can repair and reuse things, obviously the last resort should be recycling, which is very heavy um, resource intensive, we know that. So we are all playing a very important role um, with respect to contributing to Australia's move to a circular economy. So don't be distracted by um, the kind of waste and recycle movement. It's all very important and very part of it. But I think our role is to, to make more prominent the role that repair and reuse can play um, in reducing our waste. Building communities and sharing of skills. There's so many facets um, to repair. Just briefly, we're all in the repair and the repair industry. Hey. <laughs> Maybe you would know this um, as well, but look, the societal impacts and the community building that we are seeing from the 102, at my latest count, repair cafes in Australia is extraordinary. Um, we have people who are coming together in a certain place with a shared purpose across generations who sit down and share skills, share knowledge, share stories and experiences and often share a meal at the end of the day um, to celebrate not only the reduction of waste, but also the fact that there is a place that people can come to where they feel as though they belong and they can contribute to society through this really important way. And, and we can't underscore the importance of that. So the societal impacts, the skill sharing, the issues of training, making sure that we are training repairers in the right skills that we have. We're talking with TAFE and VET about the programs that are being offered through different industries. Are we training enough refrigerator mechanics, um, car mechanics, you know, um, people who can fix things basically. But that equity and social equity and digital inclusion argument of promoting a really strong secondary market. And what we're saying is not everyone can afford to buy new, 
whether it be a new car, a new device, a new piece of um, a new electric wheelchair, for example, there is a very important role that repair and reuse can play in creating a secondary market that opens those products to a whole range of people who would otherwise not be able to afford them. So um, what I think is really refreshing is we've taken a lead from University of Queensland Repair Cafe and Shina, if you're online, um, thank you. Um, you've been a great mentor to us at UQ. But at Griffith University, we have um, started a program of Griffith Repair Cafe um, on campus. In first semester this year, we offered one at Nathan campus on the 22nd of March. On the 17th of April, we came to South Bank campus. We then went to the Gold Coast campus and we did one at Logan at the Leap Festival, which is the Logan Eco Action Festival, um, where about seven or 8,000 people came to our Logan campus just last Sunday. We've also attended um, the Green Heart Fair. So this, these opportunities are provided to our staff and students to build and share skills, but also we have had the involvement of community repairers who've come onto our campuses, which we love, and to mentor and um, inspire our student repairers and build confidence about their repair skills as well. So you all know that we are part of an international movement. There are now over two and a half thousand repair cafes um, across the world. You can have a look yourself. This is um, essentially um, started by Martina Posner um, in Amsterdam in 2009. Um, repair cafes are in every country around the world. Um, as I said, we have 102 here in Australia and growing all the time. So you are part of a much bigger movement. And I think this is not only helping people save money, um, but raise awareness around waste and also how to protect our planet and also build and strengthen those communities. So the Repair Cafe International, not all of you will be part of um, the international organization and that is fine. It essentially um, means that you pay a 49 euro fee to get a package or digital package of information, guides, um, logos, if you want to use that. I know some of you don't. Um, at Griffith University, I chose to, to do that because it just made things a little bit easier. Um, but what you can do is, um, obviously, if you've signed up to that um, international network, you can um, find yourself on a map um, somewhere, and it just gives a bit of a, a sense of where we are. Um, what's really lovely is if you've ever travel. Um, you can always call into one of those repair cafes and, and, and they do things, everyone. One of the strengths of the repair cafe movement here in Australia and internationally is everyone does their own thing. Um, they organise themselves differently. Um, they recruit differently. Um, they find different premises, find different sources of funding. And that is one of the strengths of the repair cafe movement is that um, each repair cafe can do what they like and whatever works for them. But I think the purpose of tonight is really to draw together to hear what really works well, but we all know probably we all share some common challenges. And part of the support that we would like to provide through the Australian Repair Network, and the Australian Repair Network, I'll just say, um, we are not a peak body. Um, we're essentially a research hub at Griffith University. So um, we are here to provide information and support to repair cafes if you want it, um, to provide opportunities to network and so that you can grow your own repair communities in your local area or in your states. And hopefully one day we might be able to join all those states together and get a national um, movement. And it might be the case that someone um, wants to become a national Australian Repair Cafe convener. That would be fantastic once we have the funding, I must have added. Um, so as I said, um, we're all with the Australian Repair Network and you can sign up to this network. The purpose of signing up is really largely so that we can collect a database of interested repair stakeholders. We have people from industry, but it is so that we can communicate with, with, with you as a group, okay? Um, 
In a perfect world, if um, I can get some more funding, we will be able to provide updates and newsletters about what's happening internationally. I'm always happy to share. Um, there's been a lot happening this year, um, both in the US and in Europe, around the right to repair movement more generally that will impact upon you as repairers in repair cafes. Um, but essentially, that is um, what we're doing. We'll be holding an Australian Repair Summit, our third one in Canberra, on Friday the 11th of August again. Um, we hold it in Canberra at the National Library so that we can um, encourage our politicians essentially and our regulators to come along and drop by if they can um, to make it easier to them. So um, you're more than welcome to attend. That will be a hybrid event. It's a free event um, to come to if you are down that way or a free event to join online as well. And I think that's really important so that we spread that message more generally. So updates on repair cafes in Australia. Um, just quickly, um, I just wanted to say, I think congratulations to everyone. I think we keep growing. Um, in Queensland, we now have um, our 14th opening in Southeast Queensland. Bean Lee is the latest one who is looking um, to open um, essentially once they get a, a base of volunteers. You can, um, and I'll just show you on our website if, um, if I can, if you can bear with me, if the link works. What's that? This could be interesting. Oh, yes, here we go. Um, so there's information about our summit. But if you go down, this is... Oh, it's not on the screen. You can see if we can. Yeah, I'm sharing. Okay, don't worry. Um, for those of you online, sorry, um, and in the room, um, if you go to our Australian Repair Network and you scroll down a little bit, you can see a map of Australia with all of the 102 repair cafes um, that are marked on the map. And we have created a list of PDFs for each state, which will provide you with the details of um, the Facebook websites and an email address, and generally speaking, the um, opening times for each state in Australia. And we've been updating that. Um, for those of you who um, are in Western Australia, South Australia, Canberra, um, ACT, sorry, Victoria, New South Wales, Northern Territory, um, you should have received an email or your convener should have received an email. We are in the process of trying to update um, all of the, that information. Um, Karen Ellis, um, who is Mended Australia with her husband, Danny Ellis, um, I think who are online. Um, thank you, Karen. She has done the map for us. Um, she is also on our steering committee. Wonderful um, contribution that she makes um, through her advocacy and that map gets updated. So one of the purposes of us reaching out to you is to make sure that our information is up to date. Um, oh, great, sorry. Can you scroll down to the that screen? Thank you. Sorry. Um, so if anyone um, is joining us tonight who hasn't received that email, please email me um, and we can um, add, add your repair cafe to that list as well. Because what's really important is that we can direct people. When I get queries, and I do get queries um, from all parts of Australia about I've got a broken this, and I'd like to go to a repair cafe, for example, in Wollongong, I had a query the other day, I'd like to be able to direct them to the repair cafes that are operating um, with the correct Facebook details and the times of operation. So that would help us a great deal to, to share that message with you. So um, essentially, what I thought now, um, we've got people online, we have people in the room. Um, I'm going to give everyone um, essentially two minutes to introduce yourselves because I'm really mindful of um, the time that we have because I'd really like to open it to discussion. But um, if for those um, people, I might start with the people online because I know everyone always starts with people in the room. So I um, would ask perhaps if we go around the um, screen as far as I'm looking at it, I might just start with David. David Painter, I know you're there from the Gold Coast Tool Library. 
Yes, hello everybody. It's nice to oh, join hi. in. Would you like to introduce yourself, David? That would be great. And um, that'd be great. Yes, I'm the founder of the Gold Coast Tool Library. Um, we also have been running repair cafe events. Haven't run some for a little while, but we definitely intend to run more as soon as we can uh, secure some more, more volunteers in that space. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. I'm going around the screen. Um, Charlie, are you able to introduce for me, Valley? Hi, Charlie. Hi there. Um, yeah, from Mooney Valley Repair Cafe. Uh, we've been running a repair cafe for three or uh, three years, I think now, in Booty Valley. Pretty successful as part of a few other. Um, sorry, there's a good echo. So uh, yeah, part of the uh, Mooney Valley sustainability, where we run all sorts of things in conjunction with that on the day of our repair cafe. It's been going well. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie. Um, Deb, are you there? Can you hear me? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Um, my name is Deb Stevenson. I'm from the Yorubadala uh, Repair Cafe. Um, Jodie Warren's also here. She's from the Yorubadala Repair Cafe. We've been going for three years um, post the bushfires. And um, we've uh, we run on Friday mornings for three hours. Um, we have quite a lot of volunteers. We've been quite successful. We've um, been auspiced by the South Coast Health and Sustainability Alliance, which is a non-for-profit in the Yorubadala that does some amazing work, uh, mainly with uh, um, renewables and um, they've been really and sustainable um, development. They've been really supportive of us. We also attract, so we've attracted some funding from our Commonwealth um, MP, um, she's helped us, Fiona Phillips, and we also attract quite a bit of money in donations because people really appreciate what we do. We have um, teams of sewers, electrical people, people that glue. We have support from the local bike shop who's given us a bike stand and some bike tools plus some training. And um, we're working with some other organisations um, uh, in the Europe Adala to try and keep things out of uh, landfill. Thank you, Deb. That's um, that's really useful. Thank you very much for coming along tonight. Um, I've got a volunteer. Um, I'm going to go across the screen. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi. I think that I think that might be me, Leanne. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Sue Jacob. I'm in freezing cold Ballarat, Victoria, so Ballarat Repair Cafe. Um, my colleague Claire is also uh, with you this evening. So um, we've been running since 2019. Claire and I are part of the founding group. Um, we've got a good core group of about up to 20 volunteers um, that do our fixing and mending for us. We are auspiced by Breeze, which is a local um uh, group that auspice, you know, sort of sustainability and environmental groups, um, but we self-fund. Um, we run on the last Saturday of every month um, in the afternoon at a local campus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and thank you for joining us tonight from Greece and Ballarat. <laughs> um, we have Claire. Next. Claire O'Connor, are you there? That's me, and I'm the other half of Freezing Ballarat Community. Um, so I, um, yeah, I think Sue's probably covered most of what we, um, most of our introduction, but I would say we do have, um, it, I'm kind of looking forward to some of the discussion tonight. I think there's probably some you know, issues that we deal with that probably most other cafes deal with as well. Great, thank you very much. We, Karen, welcome, Karen. You're next up. Are you able to join us? I hope so. Hello. Hello. Am I coming through? Yes, I think you are. Oh, good. Hello. I've got a bit of a back noise. Uh, it's Karen Ellis. I'm co-founder of Mended Australia with my husband, Danny Ellis. 
We are self-funded and have been working in the repair cafe space since about or just before 2012. We're avid repairers ourselves. We Karen, have, sorry, we just can't see you. Are you able to turn your camera on? It might be. Yeah, I did turn. Oh, okay, that's okay. No. Um, my technician Danny is not doing a good job, here, Leanne. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Sorry to interrupt you. No, keep going. Sorry. So uh, Danny and I have been to Mooney Valley Repair Cafe and we've been to Ballarat Repair Cafe and probably a number of other repair cafes uh, of the people here, here tonight. And uh, lately uh, in 2023, we've uh, decided to not travel around as much and we are at Wyndham Repair Cafe this year, supporting them. They're a smaller repair cafe. And uh, most of our work these days is concentrated on um, our advocacy and activism for the right to repair. And of course, my role, um, which is separate to Mended Australia on the Australian Repair Network Steering Committee. So it's exciting times and we're thrilled to be uh, involved in, uh, in all the new developments that are happening in relation to the repair and right to repair. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks, Karen. Um, next, we have um, Gabrielle. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Gabrielle from Lake Macquarie Repair It. Um, we started in 2018. Um, we have a group of about uh, 20 people who volunteer, and we are running second month on the first Saturday. Thank you very much, Gabrielle. Thank you. We have um, Deb? Did we speak to Deb? Yeah. Yes, Padma. Sorry, Padma. Oh, we've got two Debs, no? Yeah. So people move. Padma, can I go to you next? Padma at the Gap Repair Cafe. Are you there? On. Hi. 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 We can't oh, see you. Sorry, can you? But we can hear you, Padma. That's okay. Okay. That's all right. So now that's a good thing. Hi. Yeah. We are. Um, we're I think Aaron is also online. So Aaron and I and another few people who are the co-founders of the Repair Cafe in the Gap. And uh, we have been in operation for about a year. And we we're fortunate to have Leanne you there a few months ago to come and visit us. We have been, it's, it's been growing. We have got a, a very a group of very dedicated volunteers. Um, we we were able to get some funding from local philanthropists who was able to support us to get our insurance going in the first instance. We've been able to get uh, funding or support, in-kind support from our local Bunnings. Um, most recently, we have also been able to, we've been successful in getting the Stronger Communities grant from the federal government. So that is going to help us um, get a lot uh, Few, few of the items like the test and tag machines and so on. Sorry. That's great. Well done. So, so yeah, so we're doing we're doing reasonably well. And an issue that we would like to raise maybe later on would be the question of insurance. Currently, yes. we are uh, uh, we've actually moved uh, venues to the Girl Guides, and our rent does cover. The insurance cover that the girl guys provide, but that is something that we do need to look at what what the insurance is and the types of insurance that we need. So, yeah, so I think uh, Aaron may may be able to add a bit more to uh, this, but uh, in a nutshell, that's, uh, we have been working quite well, and we've done a fair bit of repairs, and we do belong to the International Repair Cafe. So we're able to also access the repair monitor database. That yes. Thanks, Padma. Thanks very much. It's great to hear about your grant. Congratulations. 
Um, we have Wendy next. Wendy, are you there? Yes. Hi. 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 Sorry, I'm just trying to turn my camera, but it's not working. That's okay. Yeah, I'm from Rebecca in WA. Um, we started near five years ago. Uh, we started with about 12 volunteers. And um, now we have about 30 in our team, uh, of which 22, 24 turn up uh, at our sessions, depending on who's away. Uh, we run uh, second Saturday of the month for two hours in the morning. Um, and we're fortunate in that we started in a community house and later moved next door to the guide hall when we needed a bigger venue. Um, and through them, we have um, uh, insurance cover. So that's been very helpful. Um, uh, we receive enough donations to manage most of our finances, although we have received a grant uh, a couple of years ago, which uh, helped to buy some tools, which we keep um uh, at the hall instead of the repairers uh, continually having to bring in their own tools so that's been great uh, i think a couple of other members of my our team are on here and they might like to add something later um, but i can't think of anything too much else no that's great thank you very much thank you and it's great um that there's more than one person from the repair cafe so i think i'm um, coming on tonight it's great we we run these events so that we can kind of reach out and connect with repair cafes all over australia so um, i really thank you for joining us that would be great um claire Are you there? Um, the reason, sorry, everyone's moving around in the list, so um, it's a bit challenging. Oh, Claire, sorry, I spoke to you, Claire. Sorry, yeah. sorry about that. Thanks. Sorry, um, I'm sorry. I'll go to Helen. Um, are you there, Helen? Apologies. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm Wendy from um, Double View um, Hair Cafe in Western Australia. And um, Wendy's pretty much said it all. Um, we seem to go from strength to strength, which is great. And um, just regarding the donations, um, we did, we were quite low on donations and we started to ask for donations and people were more than happy to give them. Um, so it's just a question of, of asking. Um, people are more than happy to give a couple of gold coins if they've got something repaired for nothing. So we found that worked well for us. But I think pretty much Wendy covered everything else. And I might just do a shout out. We know that insurance is a problem for everyone, and that's one of the things we'd like to talk about tonight. So, um, and Queensland, I'll just put it out there Queensland has a particular problem around electrical repair because our Queensland government is back in the dark ages and we need to have licensed electricians. That's the other big thing that we'll talk about tonight. Um, but that only relates to Queensland, but I know that all repair cafes. Um, have challenges around insurance, so I'd like to devote some time to that um, later. Thank you very much. Christopher, Christopher um, are you there? Padma, can we just get you to turn your camera off, please? Thank you. <coughs> Um, Erin, are you there? From the gap, I know Padma's just spoken. Do you have anything to add? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Erin, thank you. Uh, sorry, my camera is. That's fine. Um, I don't have much to add, no. Uh, just that we probably have around 15 volunteers at, a, at one of our usual events, is about the average number. Uh, we get we get uh, lots of good donations from most people who come along, so that keeps us fairly well funded. That's great. And one thing I love about um, the Gap, I've been to a lot of repair cafes, and I'll just give a big shout out 
to the way that the GAP operates, and I know many others do this as well, but you have your beautiful girl guides that come along and do cupcake stalls and um, your little cafe that operates is just spectacular. So um, a shout out to you and all those others who do something similar. I love that community involvement. Um, Gillian. That would be me. Yes. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm at Wangaratta, Victoria. Um, we actually have our, farm, our repair cafe at the farmer's market. We set up outside with four marquees. We have an off-grid trailer, so we provide our own power because we've um, turned off the power at the venue on a number of occasions, um, short circuiting things. So we have now have our own power. We are standalone. We're mobile. We can go wherever we want. Um, one of the things we've done is to go to the off-grid festival, share our skills with the people there. Um, we have probably five to eight people, and we meet once a month on the second Saturday at the farmers market. That's fantastic. I love the idea of the farmers market. That's great, um, and the idea that you're almost a mobile. Um, you know, venue as well. That's something there's something I'll mention later on. But thank you very much, Gillian. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Ian, are you able to introduce yourself? If not, um Jody? Hello, I'm Hi, just, Abby, how are you? Good. I don't have a, a visual. That's so okay. I'm with Deb Stevenson and uh, I volunteer at the Uberdella Repair Cafe. I'm a new member and I'm part of the sewing team that repairs clothes and curtains and all sorts of things. That's fantastic. I love I love the sewing team. It's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Um, John, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, sorry, just organising the picture. Yeah, John Hillel, um, I started the St Kilda Repair Cafe in 2017, end of 2017. And um, We've been running ever since. Uh, we have about 35 people on the list of volunteers, and it's probably a small group of about 10 or 12 come regularly. Um, we also do outreach programs to things like the Zero Waste Festival and other things in various times. And um, we're about three quarters of the numbers back that we had before COVID. So we still haven't quite reached the, the number we had before COVID. But we're getting there. Thanks very much, John. We've found it just in terms of insurance and that sort of stuff. Sure. Co-sponsored by the Portland Pecco Centre, who provide premises and uh, so on, and, uh, and the Jewish Environment Network, both of whom are insured, doubly insured. Uh, <laughs> So we we'll, we'll came twice if someone tried to do it. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you very much, John. That's great. And um, part part of this as well, we'll record this event, I should have said, um, is that so we can um, build communities within states, within local communities, um, so that you can reach out to each other as well. So part of this is a, a information gathering exercise as well. Um, who else do I have that I haven't invited to participate? Julie. Julie. Yes. yes, I think that's me. I'm from um, Castle Maine. Um, we operate out of the community house here and have been operating since 2017. I'm a relative uh, newbie to that uh, team. Um, my interest is more in the reporting and, and um, keeping some information about what we're repairing and and uh, we operate on donations, which has been um, really very generous. People will come in. We've been doing everything from bike repairs, sewing, uh, knitting, dining workshops, um, electrical and toys. And that's where we get 
great donations because people have wonderful emotional connections to their older toys. Um, it's got about 15 regular repairers uh, in our group, um, always um, ebbing and flowing a little. And um, the comment we most get, going back to one of your earlier comments, is what a wonderful sense of community and how enjoyable the, the repair cafe is. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's something that I hear um, at whatever repair cafe I go to around the country and even the ones I've visited overseas, it's that sense of community and shared purpose of people to coming together, which is wonderful. And I think we've got Louise and Sandy, and that might be everyone there, and then we'll turn to the room. Um, Louise, are you there? Um, if not, Sandy. That's okay. My daughter. Oh, Sandy, sorry. Oh. Me here? Can you see? Oh, yes, Sandy. Hey. And Louise, too. Sorry, Sandy, I'll ask you to go first and then Louise. Hey. Sorry. That's okay. Keep the camera on. That's fine. Uh, I'm with um, Wendy and Helen from WA. Um, I only want to add is that I've been putting all the data into your lovely um, website <laughs> and I think we've really found it useful um, because um, we can already see what we're repairing the most, uh, the things that are going wrong, uh, all those sorts of little things that you probably wouldn't pick up day to day. So I'm really pleased that we're using part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sandy. And um, for those of you who may not have participated on the Australian Repair Network website, we did run a, a specific online um, workshop around gathering of repaired data, and we invited the Restart Project, which is Ugo and James, to actually run that for us uh, about using the Repair Monitor because there is a global collection of repair data, and that really helps us talk to the regulators, policy makers and government to provide some stats around um, what is being repaired, what is um, breaking most often and how difficult things are to repair. So that data collection exercise is a really important one and we really are grateful. We know it takes time, we know it's a bit of a hassle for the organisers and the repairers themselves to fill out those forms, but there is a greater purpose and, and it's actually doing us really well. Sorry, last person would be Louise. Um, Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm Louise Yearn from the Brisbane Bayside Repair Cafe. And we operate the second Saturday normally if the, play, if the place allows us to be there. Um, we have about 15 dedicated volunteers. Uh, we are self-funded by donations at the moment. Uh, I'm also a coordinator for Winter Manly Boomerang Bags, so we're able to use the sewing machines from the from the Boomerang Bag Group, and some of the ladies from the Boomerang Bag Group do the repairs there. And we've been going for it's two years, our second year. And about the donations, when people come back to bring their form back in after everything's been fixed, and we ask them, are they happy it's fixed? They say yes. And we say, well, can you write something lovely on the form for us, please? And then, and if you'd like to make a donation, we'd be very happy. And that's how we get donations. That's excellent, Louise. Thank you very much. And you also have the great um, kitchen there that another organisation has the best jam. Um, sorry, it's called jam. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, and I, I should... I, I should say, Leanne, that um, the, the Waterloo Bay Leisure Centre, we're their charity. Yes, yes. At the moment. Okay. So, no insurance needed. Thank you. No, thanks very much, Louise. Thanks for joining in. Um, and in the room here, we, we have half a dozen people, so um, we won't take too long of your time. But, um, Wayne, I'll just hand over to you quickly to introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Wayne Mabby. I am a volunteer and also on the committee of the Sandgate and the Redcliffe uh, Repair Cafe. Thank you very much. 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 Th
Um, yeah, it's great to just be involved with both of them, but they're basically living in the driving distance for me. Um, we're actually, uh, sorry, Sandgate is also just by the Sandgate Sandbag. Um, that's the community centre at Sandgate, yeah? Yes. Uh, so they help us with the venue and uh, they have a great kitchen and so forth. Uh, same with um, most of the other cafes, we run on donations and um, we've actually got some uh, test equipment that we share amongst a few uh, different repair cafes, once again, organised by Les. <laughs> so it saves us from having to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on equipment for each cafe. We get yes. the benefit of sharing it around because generally we're not all working on the same weekend. No, and that's one of the things I think in each state in Australia that the, it's a similar operation that the repair mm. cafes have coordinated their opening time so that there's almost one running every um, Saturday morning, for example, some run on Sunday, but that enables that sharing of resources, which is so important. Thanks, Wayne. And Brooke? Um, hi, my name's Brooke. I'm from Repair Cafe Full Endeavour, and we're one of the Repair Cafes that benefits from the devices from Sandgate and Red Request. So thank you very much. And Roger. Yes, yep. Um, yeah, so we uh, run out of a venue for free, which is Reverse Garbage Queensland, which has some similar sustainability sort of initiatives. Thanks, Brooke. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm also with the uh, Repair Cafe Full and Gabba. Um, and we are all hospitalized by uh, Community Initiatives and Resources Association, just a local group. But otherwise, yes, we're entirely donations. Yeah, I'm John. I'm from the Cafe in Grove. Um, we've been going for just over a year, I think. Um, got the same as everyone else, about 20 regular volunteers uh, doing various things. Probably the most important one is the one in my the front desk, which nobody can get past to her make a donation. So she's, uh, she's very skilled and it works well. Um, the bigger thing that I guess I'd like to do better and then we'll get how yet is to capture the kind of data that we could usefully load onto the repair monitor. Yes. I keep trying to get it, but, but very hard to get things like uh, make a model and all that kind of stuff actually reliably captured. So that's that's the sort of cutting into what we're doing at the moment. Trying to get a volunteer dedicated to doing that job. That's it, that's right. And that's something that we spoke about at the data collection seminar is about whether, you know, ideally we would have a volunteer that could almost work from the triage desk. Yeah. to collect that data. I know that the repair monitor and the Europeans generally focus very much on electrical devices and, and household appliances. So their data collection is quite focused on that. So at, for example, at our Griffith Uni Repair Cafe, I've adapted that a little bit because we have a lot of jewellery repair, mending, and I would like to collect that data as well. So I've actually separated off the um, electrical information about model and serial number because a lot of the appliances we see are you know too old to even determine what they are that yeah. are. So any collection of data is useful. So don't stress too much if you can't get that exact information. But um, any data collection is, is great. Well we're capturing it for our own internal reporting. Yes. So we report back to all our volunteers about you know, how many repairs we did, what sort they were, how many we didn't succeed, all that sort of stuff. Yes. But I think there's great value in feeding it back into the, the repair. Exactly. You know, the repair movement. It's, you know, we're sort of grassroots into that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, this, would be, this would be a great time to get an AI student at Griffith University <laughs> to work out a scanning process. We could just <laughs> scan the way the well, you, you won't be heard with our microphone, sorry. No, I was going to say, yeah, so um, you can say that when you turn it down, sorry. Sorry, Wally. Yeah, uh, Wally White, I'm with um, John in the um, uh, Repair Cafe, The Grove. Um, the value of the Repair Cafe came home to me very sharply um, at our last meeting. We had a young woman who was living in a camper van to escape domestic violence. And the transformer for her solar system had packed up and she had it costed and it was gonna cost several hundred dollars. There was no way in the world that she could afford that. She was beside herself. Yes. Then 
a repairer fixed it within five minutes. The expression on that woman's face yes. was worth a year's hard toil. Yes. <laughs> That's a wonderful story, um, and there there are so many stories that that touch upon similar experiences. It, it's just such a wonderful thing, isn't it, to be able to change someone's life in that way? It makes it all so worthwhile. Exactly, exactly. Very funny. Uh, hi, Leanne has already introduced me. My name is Elena Alato. I'm a researcher, predominantly in the field of repair for the past almost twelve years now. And I'm honored to be in this virtual actual room with all of you. Thank you so much for your hard work. Like we doing nothing without your volunteering and contributions. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine. Hi, um, um, Leanne has already introduced me. My name is Kanjana. I'm from the Business School. So I work with Elaine on her right project. Thanks. Nicole. Hello. Hi, um, my name is Nicole Gray. I'm um, Bit of an interloper. I can attest to one cafe ever at Sherton, which is the library thing I used to run. Uh, but I just wanted to say I'm here in my capacity as the convener of the Australian Library Things Network. Uh, shout out to people online. I know Ballarat and Gold Coast, two libraries run repair cafes. So I just thought it might be interesting to know that um, from the recent survey that we did, at least seven of the two libraries also run repair cafes. So I'm just here because I think that there's a lot of synergies and we kind of got you guys as a colleagues. It's awesome to see all the amazing work that you've been doing and um, more than happy to share some um, ideas on how to collect that data, something that we've just started doing. I think it's immensely valuable. So yeah, all the best, best. Mm. And I think I'll just add, um, Nicole, as she said, um, she's involved in the Allot Network and they have just done a survey of all of the library of things and that is something that if I don't mention it later, I would like to talk to you about because um, we would like to capture some similar information of the work that Nicole has done with the Allot Network about how many um, repair cafes we have, how you're um, operating, how many volunteers you have, how much work you're doing, how you're dealing with insurance and how you're dealing with a whole range of issues, but also what you're doing really well. And the best way for us to do that is probably through a survey. Um, so we hope to reach out to you um, in the near future with a survey. And we know that surveys sometimes are challenging, but there is a greater goal, and that is to provide us with information so we can support you better and represent you better to um, the people who fund potentially can help us strengthen this repair cafe movement and provide funding, whether that be at local, um, state or federal level. Um, we need some data around how much is being done and how many people are involved and some of these great stories that are happening as well. Thanks, Nicole. Sorry, Liz. Uh, yes, Liz Barth, the president of the Redcliffe Peninsula Repair Cafe on the Gabi Gabi country. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, past, present and emerging. I think that's a really important thing um, for us because of the, the area that we're in. So we've been running for two and a half years. Um, we've got about 15 volunteers, it ranges 15 to 20. Um, we've, uh, we've repaired about 65% of the items that, that have come through us in the last two and a half years, which I'd love to see it close to 100% of anybody would, I'm sure. Um, so we've just become incorporated. I think we're the first repair cafe in name in Queensland. And I've, I've done that for a few reasons to protect us, but we can talk more about that because uh, it relates to insurance and a whole range of things. Um, so I've had just gone through the challenges of insurance, which has been absolutely mind blowing. And, and as Leanne mentioned earlier, the electrical requirements in Queensland are very different to every other state. So that's um, become a bit of a, a problem for us, but um, so for the others. Repair cafes in Queensland, it's the same issues that apply. Uh, yeah, so we're uh, we're pretty excited about the future. We've just got into new premises. They're really supportive of us, so we're looking forward to a, a, a growing future in the next few years. Great, thanks, Liz. Hi, my name is Pat, and I am part of Redcliffe Peninsula um, Repair Cafe, and I do the catering. So I do the baking, my friends, and the excellent. So you have to come.
the lava is going on next baking out. So I'm doing gluten free and I do all the lactose intolerance and dairy free things. So yeah, yeah it's been a fun, but great community. I love it. Great. Thank you. And Jenny. Um, catering is really important. So I think yeah. really catering is very important. Relate to that because you know at the Stafford Repair Cafe we had some volunteers doing like you know 12 year olds doing their you know community rotary service and they yes. were coming around and actually serving tea and coffee and eggs and things and that was sensational the best thing about the repair cafe. Anyway, um, my main I like I volunteer with um, Leanne in the Australian Repair Network, um, so help out where I can um, and. Will be involved in the Australian um, Repair Summit um, in August. So, if you are so inclined to want to see you come to Canberra and talk all things, um, you know, repair uh, with our politicians and how to push the needle for right to repair and also community based repair initiatives. Um, but to be honest, my main passion really is about community based repair and trying to really accelerate um, and scale the movement. So I would really love to hear some ideas from around the room about how you think we'd be best placed to do that and what we need to actually make that case to the people that have got the money to help us do it. So I'm now involved actually, I work actually in a philanthropic organisation, I'm getting more involved in that space. So we need the evidence. So when the survey comes out, please fill it out. We would love to have that data to take to government, to take to philanthropic funders, to say, give us this, you're going to get a great return, community building, improving social isolation, um, you know, environmental outcomes, training and, you know, skilling. Like, there's a, you know, a whole range of wonderful things that cross a whole range of different sectors. This is, I think this is one of our challenges, like, you know, people sort of think, oh, it's like environmental. It's just environmental. It's like we, we cross, like, so many different parts of government, you know. Government is very isolated and solid, but I spent my lifetime in government. Like, this is the one thing that crosses government boundaries. Let's make the most of it, guys. <laughs> Um, thank you. I hope that um, has been useful in terms of giving everyone a bit of a sense of where everyone is at. Um, as you will get a sense, one of the strengths of the community repair um, grassroots movement that we have in repair cafes is that we are all different um, and everyone does, you know, gets access to funding differently and has um, different arrangements in their own repair cafes. And I think that's one of our strengths is that you know your own communities, you may have connections in those communities with um, local organisations that you can partner with or with local council or with your state governments. Um, some state governments are better than others. Um, my plan at the Australian Repair Summit, and I'll, I'll put it out there because I'm hoping to shame um, actually, I'll put it out to um, everyone from other states. If you have any contact with your um, environment ministers, but um, just to share um, some insights from Queensland. The Queensland government has released um, an e-products action plan where um, they, it's a 10 year plan from 2023 to 2033, um, looking at ways we can address um, the waste and e-products. Um, the obvious one for Queensland is the fact that we need licensed electricians to touch electrical things. We have made the uh, ARN, um, have made submissions as have a number of organisations about the fact that we are behind the rest of Australia in that regard. That is being addressed with our state government. Um, the ACCC, as I understand, is also looking at this issue at a broader level. But what I would like to see at the Australian Repair Summit is someone from every state department in, in environment in each of the states of Australia get up on stage and, and talk about what their repair grassroots or um, regulatory repair initiatives are. We hear a lot from government about um, circular economy, um, but on the ground repair initiatives who is funding repair cafes, who is actually helping, assisting them, who is working on the insurance, who is helping them with venues at a state government level, 
Queensland has made certain recommendations in their draft plan which look really positive from us from a repair perspective and I've invited um, that department to present at the Australian Repair Summit on, on our plan in Queensland but I know that we are falling behind um, Victoria, South Australia, you have sustainable communities sitting under your State Department. All of those state, any state initiatives that anyone knows of, if you can share them with me because I really like to have an Australian showcase of what state governments are doing. We know what's happening at local councils um, around waste and, and recycle and reuse, but state governments have a role to play here as well. So um, that's just a call out to everyone um, in the room, but also online, um, if you have any knowledge of state initiatives, I'd love to hear from it because I'd love to give the states the opportunity and the territories to, to shine about that. So, um, Let's talk about, generally, things that are doing well, um, things that are going well for you in repair cafes. Um, I hear from tonight, um, you know, a Commonwealth-funded grant, Padma at the Gap, well done. That's fantastic. Um, that's really great. We know that a lot of repair cafes in other states have got funding from their state governments or from community funds um, at the local government level. So, you know, I'm not sure what might be useful. If you are willing to share that information about what funding, external funding you have um, with us, that would be great because we are constantly looking for sources of funding, um, philanthropic as well as state federal and local government for sources of funding that we can use, whether it be a Lord Mayor community fund. A lot of the funding that's available to repair cafes is often not for staffing. Um, it is for kind of one-offs. You can get aprons made, for example. Um, you can use it to host a, a, an event or you can um, use funding for certain purposes. But to have a, a convener role funded um, is a really big challenge under a lot of the way um, programs are funding. So funding is something, um, if we can't share it in the room, I'm happy to open up about funding, um, different sources of funding, how you get that funding. Donations are fantastic. Um, they do really well. I think people are doing great if you can run on donations. We know everyone's giving their time, but it would help. Um, I personally went to Bunnings and got a donation of tools for the Griffith University Repair Cafes and they were really generous and I know some repair cafes use that, partnerships with local businesses to get um, access to um, resources and funding or, or whatever. But I might just give five, ten minutes. Are there any kind of, from what you've heard tonight, um, is it worth sharing our experiences around um, getting access to funding um, and some unique or interesting or ways that you think might be able to be shared amongst other repair cafes? Liz? Uh, I think that's a really good question you've asked about funding. Can I answer that? Whether it's recurrent, uh, sorry, whether it's, whether it's ongoing funding annually or whether it's one of I think that's really important. Yep. Well, let's just start who's got funding and then we can say whether you get it again or it's a one-off. So, oh, thank you. You put your hands up. Um, Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Hi. Right. We've managed to secure some funding through the EPA's um, Too Good to Waste program through our local council. But it took, us, it took us a while to get there. It took us about four years. But they um, have come to the party now. And it is ongoing funding. So which state's wonderful? Which state's wonderful? You're in like... New South Wales. Yeah. Okay. So um, these are things, um, Gabriel, I don't know if, you, you know if you're inclined, but it'd be great to... Um, find out more details roughly about all the programs that people are accessing because it might be something um, we don't want to jinx you in terms of compete um, and we're very conscious of the fact that some of the sources of funds 
are not, you know, infinite. Um, but just to give people ideas of the types of um, places that people can go, perhaps, and, and that's entirely up to you, but I'd I really like to get some sense of where people are going. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. sorry. I also um, jumped into a workshop the other day from the Araring Power Station in Lake Macquarie that's closing down, and they have $5 million available. So over the next five years, well, they poisoned our, our area, so they're going to give us a little bit of compensation for that. So I intend to get a nice little chunk of that. That's fantastic. They have to repair repair the environment and um, more generally. Yes, every mining company and energy company will do that when they close down. And we've got a few starting to close down. Great. Great. Thanks, Gabriel. Um, Sandy. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in WA. And um, uh, my letter says January 21, so that was when we were accepted a small grant and it was uh, through our federal member and it was Stronger Communities Program. Right. Um, because it was small, I think that they pretty much just took it off. Uh, and it wasn't infrastructure, so it was just equipment and um, um, disposable you know, glues and things. Yeah, yeah, no, that's often the case, but that's, that's good to know as well. And I think some of the um, kind of those one off um, opportunities to get funding can fund the purchase of things like testing and tagging equipment, which is, is what we were talking about. That can be shared depending on. So now that I've done the grant system, it took me about three days of paperwork. But now that I've done it, um, I continually get an update of what grants are coming through. And I think you can apply online for a portal that tells you what grants are coming up. And, and if your organisation fits into one of those categories, it doesn't do any harm to just fill in the forms and have a go. That's very Sandy, where are you? Which state are you WA. in? WA. WA, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. That's great to know. Um, Claire, you have your hand up too. Um, yeah, um, so in Ballarat, we have um, we've been reasonably successful with our funding. Uh, when we initially started, we approached some local businesses, uh, like Barney and Stephanie, that asked for consumer rentals. Um, but then in 2020, I think we got a um, community environment um, grant from the Commonwealth Government. Um, because um, during the period of that grant, um, it was a big grant. We um, started working more closely with the Ballarat Tool Library, but we were starting to We found we didn't need as much to actually read our grants. We are expecting to have to return funds, but very generous. We said, are you um, so that was a bit of a bonus. Um, we have also completely out of the blue, um, we were approached about 12 months ago by the Victoria Grant of the Australian Nursing and Employment Association saying they heard about us and were keen to give us a donation. So that secured us for something for 12 years, which is just um, and also working with the tool library has been really good for us. It's allowed us to um, uh, share their tools. We do some repairs for them and they um, let us use a lot of their tools, which is a far larger range than we would have had just on our own. Um, so yeah, from a various rate of sources, we've had funds and sort of sharing of resources. Thank you very much. Um, is there anyone else? Wendy, Wendy sorry. Hi. I just wanted to add to what Sandra was or Sandy was saying just now. Um, we also have been quite fortunate in getting funding from our local council for things like um, signage. 
um, and um, we applied for funds to cover volunteer thank you celebrations. And uh, just trying to think, we also did tap into Bunnings. Um, and when we have our um, anniversary celebrations, uh, we always invite local councillors um, and the local MP, but he doesn't come, but uh, the councillors very often um, give us um, a small donation when, when they attend in recognition of the fact that we're still going um, after nearly five years now. Um, so those are just some other ideas for small extra uh, sources of funds to supplement the donations. I think I, I do know that, um, like you, um, a number of other repair cafes have reached out to their local politicians, local MPs, local members to come along when, whenever they celebrate a birthday, um, and it just helps it raise that awareness. Mm -hmm. I think um, one discussion I was having with the local council here um, is the idea, which I'm quite interested in, is the idea of running um, a bit of a repair expo um, for a day um, in a community where we can invite local repair businesses along and encourage those businesses perhaps to offer up one or two hours of their time to a repair cafe, to kind of do a pop-up repair cafe, but invite the community along um, so that we can build a relationship with those repair businesses. Because I know, uh, particularly in the sewing and mending um, kind of skills area, um, as I go around Australia and visit more and more repair cafes, I really like the attitude of some of um, the members and sewers, and they say, look, we're volunteers, we just don't do zips. Um, and I, I love that. And they say, they, you know, they take too long, they're too difficult, people don't bring the right zips. And so we just say we don't do zips, we'll do everything else. So I think, um, you know, there's opportunities there, but they will then refer people to the local dry cleaner or the local repairer um, alteration. So we can, instead of looking like we're taking business away, we can actually bolster those communities by referring things that we can't repair back to that community. And at the same time, we're strengthening the repair skills in the community, which we know is really kind of vanishing. So that was an idea I was kind of bouncing off with Logan City Council is how do we introduce the notion of a repair cafe into a new community we invite the repair businesses to come and give out their cards and be present, be part of the conversation around repair, perhaps volunteer some time, um, but also they will benefit as well. So there's a, a give and a take there as well. So I think that's an opportunity um, as well. So there's lots of opportunity around different funding, um, whether it be by donation, um, a gift, a one-off gift, or a current funding. Um, certainly any opportunities that we become aware of, we're happy to share. Um, but those of you who are based in your local council area, in your local um, areas, communities in states are probably best placed to know what's available to you. But sharing that information as much as you're willing is obviously going to strengthen people's opportunities as well. So funding is um, a great um, a, you know, it can be really positive, it can be challenging, but also venues. Um, it's really positive to hear most of you and most of the repair cafes that we have in Australia have found a place to operate from. Um, some people um, are forced to move around, but what we're seeing in terms of anecdotally is those, organ those repair cafes that are able to operate in partnership with or um, under the kind of... Um, or species arrangement with other um, bigger entities, such as a neighbourhood centre, for example, often that ticks a lot of boxes, not only in terms of providing a venue, and in some cases, we know here in Queensland that some of the um, community, neighbourhood community staff are actually convening and coordinating the repair cafe as part of their role with the neighbourhood centre as well. So there's a full-time kind of employee who becomes responsible for that. So that kind of brings benefits. There's benefits with um, Girl Guides, with Scout Dens, with affiliations with men's sheds as well. So is there anyone um, in terms of venues? Um, I think if you can get a venue 
where you can establish your repair cafe and that comes with insurance that's obviously a win-win for everyone um, but some people if you can't find the right venue then you may have other challenges such as insurance so um, probably this whole workshop can be on insurance and I think at one point we will probably um, run something specifically around firstly the issues around risk, secondly the issues around liability and then consequently um, issues around insurance. I think it's a challenge for everyone. Um, I think um, there is no gold, um, golden solution of getting a Griffith University student to solve all our problems. Um, I've worked at the university long enough and Eleni and Kachana will verify this. Um, if I could get a student to solve all my problems and the Repair Cafe movement's problems, I would. Um, but we can't, we can't rely upon that happening. Um, so I think from what we've heard, insurance is something that is common. I know I've asked John, um, John Tannock, who um, established the Repair Cafe Upper Kedron. Is that what it's called? It's Fernie Grove and surrounding suburbs in um, Brisbane's west. <laughs> and John has, and along with Wally, has um, gone for the option of getting um, men's shared insurance for the Repair Cafe that um, they are operating in. And we, I love the idea of the men's shed, um, not a lot of things about the men's shed, but I like the idea of the fact that the way their business um, is structured and the fact that they attract um, government funding internationally, nationally and at a state level. So, for example, the Queensland's Men's Shed Association I've been having an ongoing conversation with, but they, by having that... Um, peak body and an international body that comes with the benefit of being able to negotiate insurance and maybe I might just ask John to just to talk about your experience and this may be just an issue for the Queensland Repair Cafes and if so I apologise to everyone online but we do the fact that our electrical um, regulation around having to have a licensed electrician touch electrical things does trigger a problem for our insurance in our southeast Queensland corner. Um, but I know that insurance is a, a general, a bigger issue for everyone. But I might just ask you, John, to explain that. Yeah, well, I've been involved. Well, first thing to say, I suppose, is that uh, we are also by transition the road to the transition town, which started about 15 years ago. For which I just happened to be the tre treasurer, and Molly happens to be one of the management committee members. Um, and we did various projects, and we did have insurance to cover the kinds of things we were doing, which was mainly to allow us to uh, to hire venues. So we had that sort of twenty million dollars of general public liability insurance. We asked them when we started the repair cafe, and they said, "No way, we're not going to cover that." I had been involved in a number of um, men's sheds. So I thought well, that looks like the same kind of thing, you know, if they can do a men's shed, they can probably do us. So I approached the Australian Men's Shed Association, found out that uh, we didn't mean we can employ it, we can be a men's shed without calling ourselves a men's shed, we can still be a big cafe to grow. Uh, the insurance was very comprehensive and um, a very good price for, for the kind of operation that we are. Now, I, I think Les has done that as well. He's asked a lot of questions that I didn't ask. Um, so he didn't go that way. I, I thought it was better to be discreetly quiet about the whole thing, but I recognise that might introduce a risk. But when I looked through all of the details, unless I specifically say what's one about the fact that we are actually doing electrical repairs and now you're covering that, uh, I thought, well, I haven't excluded anything like that, so I'm just going to assume that what we're paying is comprehensive insurance, which is what it looks like. Um, so, but, the, but what we seem to get for what we're paying is uh, seems and very, very easy to get. You just got to, but you've got to do it from the 28th of February. We can't sort of, um, well, the year they have a standard year, it starts on the 28th of February and goes for a year. Thanks, John. Um, Nicole, um, Nicole from Library of Things. Um, we know that toy libraries and tool libraries have similar challenges with insurance and um, just make 
Thank you. Um, that's really good to know about uh, 20 years of separate, as long as it's not the 29th, that would make it really difficult. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to let people online, and I know I've spoken to Karen, and um, there's a couple of tool library people online as well, so they're already aware of this, but um, insurance is a common problem for us in what I like to call the repair and share space. So, obviously, you know, you guys have the problem of repairing electrical items. Tool libraries by and large like to keep things in production. So, if we get donations that we can fix, we face the same issue. We also have the extra issue of um, you know, people's reliability stuff. So, you know, we have people taking things home with their own thing. That's on them, but um, obviously, we like people bringing that. So, um, we have been exploring this with uh, our tool, uh, sorry, toy library friends. And they had a really interesting model, which was akin to the men's shed model. Uh, they actually insure themselves. So they have approximately 150, maybe 200 toy libraries around Australia and have like men's sheds been going for about 20 years or so. Unfortunately, they have now been knocked back for their entire group of insurance. And they don't even have a lot of electrical things. Um, so to me, that's a big warning sign. And it's something that we're quite aware of for our space because we're having tool libraries and libraries of things unable to begin, unable to open because they can't get insurance and can't get reinsured. So I know Ballarat, um, sorry, not Ballarat, um, Brunswick tool library and a couple of others have reported that that's been an issue. Obviously, insurance going up is an issue because if you're a small organization, especially for tech cafes, you can't rely on donations. The more expensive the insurance is, the bigger problem. So something that we've kind of been joining forces with and something that I'm keen to continue the conversation with with the repair cafes is um, having a project also actually work on this particular issue. So getting insurance that works all three um, you know, cousins, if you like, in this space uh, to fix the problem and potentially have a group insurance. So we've actually um, had some seed funding kind of spoken about and we're looking to see if it's potentially you know, able to get tool libraries, toy libraries, and repair cafes to match that funding. So we can actually fund someone to look into this issue and fix the course <laughs> on a permanent basis. So anyway, just wanted to put that out there. I'll give it back to you guys next. Yep. Uh, yes, it's interesting. That's great. I think it's a numbers game, because what I've found talking to all brokers, I recall, I've talked to so many brokers in the last three months, it's just about being crazy and I just joke. Uh, it's interesting what John has said about the Australian Mention. I went to them first. Um, insurance is changing, I'd say, monthly. And, uh, and I think part of the problems that, that you just alluded to is part of the whole changing emphasis that's happening in the industry, the insurance industry. It's all about them, it's not about us. Um, so, as we all know, <laughs> in, in, in all the insurance industry. Um, I, John, when I actually talked to the AMSA, the Australian Mention Association broker, I explained very carefully what we were doing, and he said if you're doing testing and tagging, that would be another $1,200. I didn't ask that question. Yeah, no, but that's, that's actually, it's only because it's, it's a change by their underwriter within the last 12 months. So this is where we've got underwriter issues that are actually demanding and pushing down on insurance companies as to what they're going to do. So we're seen as potentially being a high risk, which probably comes back to what you were saying, Nicole. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there's some issues that we have to sort. I've come out of this thinking one of the important things is it's a numbers game, and if we can, as a, for example, repair cafes, 102 repair cafes across Australia, go to the Australian Mentorship Association and tell our broker we've got 102 repair cafes, man, you might actually change his views. But honestly, he, he was very negative to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, plus 152 of yeah. yeah. And, and, and that is one of the benefits, um, I must say, of trying to, um, I'm not about trying to, um, you know, build the Australian Repair Cafe Network into a peak body that's going to, you know, be prescriptive and regulated. But if we can get everybody on board, even if it's just an email database, that we can communicate with everyone in a repair cafe, we'll have a couple of hundred people at the very least in Australia that we can have that conversation with. And that is part of the kind of networking that we're trying to build because we can't even attempt to have conversations with the insurance council or whoever it might be 
when we, we have three or four, you know, repair cafes on board. Um, so, you know, it's a na if it's a national problem, it would be great. Um, we know it's a particular problem in Queensland. Um, some states are fair better than others. Wendy, I, I know that you've got your hand up. Sorry. Um, over to you. Hi, I, I, just, I just want to, want to, to just talk about the, the question um, of um, testing and tagging. I didn't get yes. how much extra that costs in insurance. Uh, I've got quite a bit of text message, would you believe? Uh, $1,200. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we have insurance um, over and above the liability for uh, the electrical work that our electricians do. Um, but we didn't discuss testing and tagging, which we do on certain items if it's needed. Um, so perhaps I'd better look into that. Um, I, I think our insurance is through Alliance Australia. Uh, that's the only one our broker could find that would cover the electrician. Thanks, Wendy. I think, look, the issue of insurance um, is a big one, and, it, it, you know, obviously we need to devote more time than we have tonight. Um, but I do think we need to recognise that there is a relationship between the level of risk and um, the need for insurance. So, um, and that is something that we do in everyday life um, around our household contents, around our motor vehicle, whatever. But we need to keep um, the fact that the activities that are often being done in repair cafes around a lot of things, and I've had discussions about people sharpening garden tools and knives and what happens if someone slips and, you know, gets a knife in their you know, part of their body. There are lots of risks, but the likelihood of those things happening, if they're very minimal, we need to keep all of that discussion in um, perspective. Um, and that's something that, you know, is, is a factor for everyone. Um, so stay tuned about insurance because I would love to, and part of the reason we would like to survey is to get a sense of how many of our 102 repair cafes have problems with insurance. If we can say 100% of repair cafes in Australia or 95% have challenge um, every year getting the right insurance for their needs, then that is a discussion that we can have at a higher level, I think. So th these are the types of things that we'd really love to hear from you. Um, so I'm mindful of the fact that 7.25, we have strict rules about um, leaving this venue at 7.45. Um, so I'm mindful that we probably only have about 15 minutes left. Um, mindful of the fact that Jane has raised something which I think is really important. We have 102. We have really successful networks of repair cafes that are um, operating in community, within local council areas, within states. How do we, um, what do you see is the best way that we can upscale our repair cafe grassroots community movement in Australia? Um, we're open to ideas and I'd love to hear from all of you who are convening and volunteering about your ideas of what do you think it would take? And it's not only just the money side of things, um, but what do you think you think would help you grow, that we get more repair cafes, that they can run more often, for example, with a stronger pool of um, volunteers with perhaps support from the community through repair businesses. We know that the repair skills in our community, in our businesses, in our industries um, generally is something that the federal government is recognising is not um, growing, it's diminishing um, as generations um, go through. So whether our young students and are coming through learning the right skills. Um, the fact is that Everyday devices, you know, our cars, our tractors, medical equipment, um, household appliances, anyone could open them up and fix them. 
But now with the software that's embedded in those devices, the skill set that you need to refix things is, is, has changed and is more difficult. So this issue around not being able to open up the bonnet of your car and tinker with your car as you did with an old EH Holden, your smart car now needs to be plugged into a car manufacturer. So these are the issues around skills and training um, that are really important to our community um, as well. But I'd, I'd open it to everyone here, um, including everyone online. Um, has anyone any, got any great ideas, apart from if we could get all the money in the world, <laughs> but if you had money, what would you spend it on? Would you spend it on a convener, um, a, a full-time person who could coordinate and help structure um, you know, the venues, the rosters, the advertising, the social media, everything? Or is there something else you think that we need to be looking at? John. Well, I think one of the things that I Hang on, I'll get a microphone for you. So it's only, it just helps with the recording. That's all. Um, I think one of the things that I noticed when I go through the stats after it's about repair cafes is that we repair all the stuff and one of them is getting 100% success except the electrical stuff. Yes. Because, you know, it always comes in, it's got parts that you can't buy, can't buy it or available anymore, or that uh, little circuit boards that you have no idea of the layout and so on. And if there was some way of sharing some knowledge in that area, that would have to be getting back to the idea of capturing, making the model and parts and all that kind of thing, but some sort of a, a sharing of successes this is how we managed to fix this one now it's just one at a time it's not very much but that could have a cumulative effect that we could have something to look up and to find that's great there's a guy called dave jones and there's a whole lot of websites i can point you to if you want to email me where people do exactly that you know you want to fix a kelvinado fridge model number x y and z here's how you do it and I was going to say, yeah, there are a quite, a, and that's what's quite interesting I find, is that there is a lot of information out there and there are a lot of passionate repairers right. and I can share that information with you right. because not everything, but there is um, often examples of computers, iPhones, um, electrical equipment where people literally break them down and we'll show you how to replace things and fix them. But I, I agree that knowledge sharing would be fantastic. Could you Wayne? share Yeah, sure. I would be able to punch, I was going to say, a couple of the sites. There's a repair, a repair preservation group by the yes. Lewis and the States. Uh, I fix it is a very popular one. Yes. For Apple products. Um, yeah, so I was actually going to uh, sort of drop Les again, um, that uh, if you had all the money in the world, let's be talking about a hub. Um, so if you have a, a hub in various places, that have a, a space for tool library, membership, women should repair cafes, anything that's even semi-related that they can share knowledge, share materials and tools and space. Yep. Uh, that would be something that I think would be invaluable you know, to have them dotted around the place. Thank you. John, just on that point, and for everyone online, if anyone, I'm happy to be the recipient of that, if anyone has a great favourite website where you go to to look at repairs, and a lot of you will, um, I'm happy, if you send them to me, I'm happy to collate um, a list and share that amongst everyone. It won't be the um, panacea, but um, it will certainly give you a bit of a tip, but there's a, a, a couple of really good people that I've I've been following and I can't fix anything, but um, but that idea about building up hubs in communities, I think that's something certainly that we can talk to local councils about. I've talked to local councils all across Australia and we know that in um, Victoria that this is an example that, you know, imagine having a repair cafe at your local tip, um, your local waste and resource cover. We see so many um, great TVs, um, electrical goods being straight in thrown out of a boot straight into that big pit that gets compressed. If they could be diverted at that point and checked over by someone as to whether they're working, whether they need fixing, that is at the cold face of where we can save stuff from landfill. I'd love to see something like that. Um, sorry, I just before I forget, Brooke, I'm going to go to you. Um, one thing I'll forget, 
to mention. I was with, for this is a Queensland um, story, sorry, but with Soconomy, um, I was at the Logan Eco Action Festival. Um, there's opportunities there to run a repair cafe with um, Soconomy um, at their Morningside site um, because they're interested, but there's lots of opportunities for us um, interested in repair cafes to actually partner with um, existing waste resource recovery or um, recycling kind of centres, and that's a general um, thing. But if you're interested in that, talk to me later. Sorry, Brooke. Mine was just a quick comment in that, um, if we could have someone like a paid national convener who could tell us what the things that we find hard and the things that we find hard on insurance and, you know, do, and getting stats and things like that, if we could have someone who is a national resource, I think that would be really beneficial. That would be fantastic. I agree. And that is, that is, um, so yeah. <laughs> um, certainly our submission to the Queensland government um, about e-products was that to support repair and reuse in the Queensland economy, we need to have a Queensland convener, and I'd be happy to repeat that um, with every state. I think um, a national kind of position would be great, but I really think it needs to start local. And if you can build up um, a community like we have in southeast Queensland, or in, I know in Victoria and South Australia, um, many of the states have a, a good local network in Western Australia. Um, but if you can um, kind of get together and build that so that we can one at one day maybe get a state repair cafe convener for each state and territory, and then we could then from that have a national position. I would love to see that because there is common need um, and really that would be a full-time position as far as I can see. Um, so th that is my end goal. And that's exactly the same bill that was used uh, for the, the state um, bodies that looked after social enterprises. So she said so about 10 years ago, um, and the other states um, have been very similar in terms of like social enterprise like big bodies. Um, the national body came later and after the state bodies. So I think there is benefit in what Leanne's saying, like build locally within your own states first, um, and then hopefully at some stage in the not too distant future, we can then roll that into a, into a national, um, you know, peak or at least in order, you know, something that actually helps to share the knowledge, um, build the picture, paint the picture to the funders, the government, the philanthropic organisations, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, to be able to think it's about starting locally more, you know, something like this. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just responding. There's um, a lot of great conversation going in the chat, which we will record and we can share um, after this meeting as well. So I really, um, I think we will start to wind up, um, given that we've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, but basically, we know that insurance is a big challenge. Um, we, I will promise to try and do something around that so that we can have a dedicated discussion, um, whether that be completely online or whether that be a hybrid event. Um, but it is a national problem. It's a problem for all of the um, probably most repair cafes, so it would be great to get some uniformity around that. But um, I would like to probably draw things to a close and I would like to thank um, Melanie Davis, who is the manager of the Law Futures Centre for coming along tonight and for organising and communicating with you all um, for this event. And also... The Law I would like to give a big shout out and thanks to all of our participants online for all of your valuable contributions through the chat and for your discussion and your willingness to share um, information about what you're doing in your repair cafes and how you're funded and what's working well and what's a little bit difficult. Um, I think the more that we can have these conversations and share information, 
And you, I am more than happy um, for you to use me as a vehicle. Uh, I'm happy to put link you with each other. Um, but I really think John's suggestion about getting ideas of, you know, resources that we can share and use amongst repairers, um, I think, you know, my experience at the Gap Repair Cafe with a hair straightener that wouldn't work, um, it would light up, it wouldn't heat. And after a lot of discussions with the lovely repairer about how difficult that was going to be to open up and repair and whether we would have the right spare parts, only to find that when I looked at the manual online that it was in a safety security mode because I pressed the on-off button too many times. That was a very big success, but it also shows a little bit of information and repair information um, does solve a lot of the problems. You know, a clean, um, teaching people how to clean things, how to service things, how to replace batteries, um, sometimes is half of the work that we are doing. Um, so I just wanted to thank everyone here. Um, tonight for coming along and um, participating and thank everyone for the great work that you are doing um, on repairing. Um, honestly, the, the communities in Australia and the stories that we hear back from people about the, not only the successes but the actual joy that people get from going along to these events and the community um, is, is really heartwarming and I think that those stories are really important and that we'll continue to share those with our regulators and our policy makers and government. So um, thank you once again. Um, keep in touch. Um, any repair events, I'm happy, I've got a bit of a, I think Jane's created the passport for me and I'm going to try and get a stamp from every repair cafe in Australia at one point. Um, so if you have a birthday celebration coming up or I love coming to repair cafes because I then learn to see how everyone is doing it differently and what, what's working well. Um, I'll give a big shout out to the Unley Repair Cafe, and I'm sure a lot of other people do this, but at the end of their repair cafe, um, they all, all the volunteers got together, they all shared a, um, brought a plate essentially and sat down and shared a meal together at the end of their repair cafe. And I think that whole sense of um, community amongst the, the volunteer repairers um, was just um, so special. So thank you again for coming. Um, thanks for all the work that you do and hopefully we'll be in touch soon for another get together. But if you're around Canberra and you're in that region, we'd love to see you come along um, for our repair summit and um, we have drinks afterwards. Uh, it's a good opportunity to talk um, to industry and repair stakeholders across a whole range of sectors. So thank you again.